Hey everybody, welcome to Radio Labyrinth. This is Season 8, Episode 4. Episode 4, that means January is almost over and we're almost into February 2023. The weeks and days and years and all that just goes by so fast when you're old. We're old. Oh, I ain't being old. Anyway, hey, thank you very much to our new Patreon supporters coming in at the $5 level. Beth Van Ellswick and Jonathan Wilson. Um, and now are able to uh, watch the uh, the Patreon YouTube, uh, the Patreon show that we do. And the Patreon show this time around, we're talking about The Last of Us and, and all the other shows that we're watching, but it's really primarily um, The Last of Us. It's a show that we're excited about. We talk about how excited we are. So if you'd like to become a member, it's only the $5 and up level. I mean, you can come in at five bucks a month and we're going to be doing this with a lot of shows coming up in a couple of months. We're going to do Mandalorian. So, uh, you know, if, if you're interested, just go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews, or you could be, and I want to say thank you to all these fine folks, a Radio Labyrinth producer such as Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Mike D. Matt Carter. Remember when we used to do that? And that's that. That's all of them. That's that's all of them. We thank you very, very much. Uh, Terry Fuller is getting uh, two doodles from Tim because it's taken so long. I printed them out. I'm going to sign them and send them. Also, T-shirt on the way. You can get it at the $25 level. You are a producer. You get your name read and you get uh, a T-shirt. You can pick one of my drawings and uh, I will print it out, sign it and send it to you. And uh, also we have a couple stickers left, but we need to get some new ones. So if you guys have, this is my favorite one, one of my favorites, but I really like this one a lot. And, uh, I don't know why we call it coffees for clothes is because it's the Starbucks logo, but I like it. <laughs> and there's only a few of these left. So if you guys have any ideas for new simple circle stickers like this, um, send them to me and we'll get a bunch of new ones printed up. Um, so anyway, again, patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. Also, our friend Stu helped us out. Uh, Radiolabyrinth.com is up and running again. We had, uh, in the old website, by the way, the old URL will point to this, radiolabyrinthpodcast.com. Uh, radiolabyrinth.com is, a, is, is there, so you can follow us, listen or watch the show, um, and uh, we'll probably put more stuff on that as time goes by. Um, and if you haven't yet, please check out Radio Labyrinth Presents. It came out on Wednesday uh, with Che and Mike Butler. Mike surprised his son Che with a Secret Restoration, which is a show that you can watch on the History app or History, wherever you have the History Channel, you can watch this show. It's kind of cool. He he surprised him and took this old telephone booth and made it into a sound studio, and it's really cool, and those guys are a lot of fun to talk to, so thanks to them. Uh, for it, it needs to be in the sound studio next time we talk to him, though. That's right. <laughs> his audio was a little... Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's what happens. If Garrett Morris can have bad audio, we can all have it. <laughs> hey, thanks to everybody, too, that went on uh, Spotify and rated us. And if you haven't rated us on Spotify, please do that. And Tim did neglect to mention that if you watch the Patreon video, if you are a Patreon member, at least one of us shows our balls on camera every week. <laughs> really? Even you? Yes. Awesome. It's going to be Pickle next week. He, he, he doesn't know what he's in for. <laughs> hey, Gilbert made an appearance on that first one. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert yeah, can show I, his balls, but I don't recommend that. No, no, no not doing that. No, no, no even talk about that. Cut this long. No, don't cut it out. But <laughs> not, not doing that. Listen, hey, if you uh, rate and review us on Spotify, we'd very much appreciate it. Uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube, remember to subscribe, like, and uh, set that reminder bell so you know when uh, a new episode is up. So, Jeff, uh, Jeff, how did you pull your hamstring? doing a podcast and are you okay yeah i'm on muscle relaxers and uh, prescription strength ibuprofen that's the 800 milligram one right yep yeah. yeah that stuff's but, a miracle drug did you do like a little fancy kick while you're sitting there I mean, no i think i just i was sitting weird and like my muscle relaxed too much or something or or Tightened was up too, too tight yeah and then when i went to stand up i just felt like this sharp electric shock pain through the back of my leg you were sitting you were sitting sideways like paul wall yeah <laughs> well so Literally, i couldn't stand up i had it took me like five <laughs> tries to stand up oh dude were you freaking oh. out i would get excited yeah. for that i went to i i was finally able to stand up and then i, I could walk but it, it hurt really bad like the whole back of my leg right under my butt all the way down to my knee uh, uh, it's hurt so was it your sciatic or something i don't know what the hell it is 
the some the kind of hand. part of your hamstring, but not not the actual hamstring. I don't know. Did you get good muscle relaxers? Yeah. Awesome. Go see I, my chiropractor. Go see my yeah. Dr. Tran. He'll fix yeah. you right up. They do they do muscles? Yeah, Tran. Tendons and stuff. Let me tell you, Tran, he's a miracle worker. He'll pray over it with like he uses <laughs> ancient Chinese secrets and before you know it you feel better. Does he get out the gun, the uh the the massage gun that you can buy at like Walmart now? He he does um it's more like a um like a stapler gun, like a pat. <laughs> a pat. Yeah, yeah. It's like a stick and he'll do all that. And then he has the tins where he puts those electrodes on you. My favorite thing that he does, he's gonna adjust you at least one time and he'll get up in there, you know, and you're like, Oh god, he's gonna kill me and then and then he just goes <laughs> and like your whole body cracks your whole body. And then he'll throw you on this machine that stretches you. You put your legs over this big humpy thing and then it I've been on that. The only thing I don't like is when you're laying on your stomach and the person that brings you in the room goes, hey, you'll be in about an hour. You just lay here. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. He, you're in, you're out. He rocks. And he doesn't try to keep you coming back either. Dr. Tran. Just heard the latest news on the radio. News, 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 news. TV. And now for the latest news. All right, so we're going to have a fun show tonight. We have uh, Sylvester Stallone joining us. Before that, let's talk about some of the things that are going on in pop culture news. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, how about this? Breaking news as of today and the recording date. Uh, they're returning for a five-episode 12th season, which is friggin' awesome. And I think it's going to be called Aqua Teen Hunger Force, isn't it not? Uh, Aqua Teen Forever. Still Aqua Teen Forever. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, five new episodes and uh, no, no timeline as to when they're coming out, right? They didn't say when they'd be ready. I'm sure, they just got the order, so it's probably yeah. going to be hmm. so a little bit of time. Yeah. Well, that's friggin' awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, five new episodes is five new episodes. That's 50 minutes of entertainment, my friends, and left. Yeah. Uh, also, news on the Aqua Teen Hunger Force front uh, Aqua Teen Forever Plantasm is coming to HBO Max on February 8th. Uh, of course, the movie stars Peter Serafinowicz, uh, Natasha Rothwell, Robert Smigel, Tim Robinson, Joe Firestone, Kyle Kinane, Blair Sochi, and Golden... And this is what Dave Willis put on in his Instagram. And Golden Globe Award winner Paul Walter Hauser, parentheses, though I'm pretty sure he didn't win it for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave's Instagram is pretty good. It's relatively new. And if you want to follow him, it's at Dave Willis Shake Table. I just followed him. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Alec Baldwin, who is currently in the news for killing someone accidentally uh, with a gun, a prop gun. That, Allegedly. Alleged. Yeah, she, she, no, she's dead. And <laughs> <hold the career. laughs> uh, so he killed someone. Now, it wasn't intentional, and he didn't intend to do it, of course. Uh, and, you know, he's probably going to be uh, put on trial for involuntary manslaughter, but... That was the big news last week, but this dumbass can't stop posting stupid shit. This guy is as addicted to social media as a 15-year-old. I mean, he what did he post, Steph? He posted a picture of his son giving a back rub to his wife or some shit. Yeah, I... and then he, he, he made it seem like it was freaky, like they were having some sort of sensual encounter. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, it's, like he just, it's like he's baiting people yes. into coming after him, and then Come so on. he can... Uh, have some retort about it yeah. and act like they're the crazy ones. I dare you. Okay. Which they are crazy because who gives a shit what he's doing? I mean, who, who really cares? I mean, I I love his acting. I think he's hilarious. But like as a person, he's kind of a dildo. Put that bottle down. <laughs> Formula is for closers. <laughs> what it, oh, you know, if I were him, I would delete all of my social media right now and and not go on it until after all this is over because and like the impractical jokers did with all their pictures of justin Ryland. they did yeah um, got them scrubby dub dubbed so they deleted their accounts or just no, got... they deleted all the pictures that they had with them wow yeah that guy's in cancel land he's not coming back either having chats with 16 year old girls calling her calling her a slut and you know and then just i don't know is that what got him kicked off or was it that... no it was some kind of domestic violence thing with was his it, wife. Yeah. Uh, Felony. 
felony domestic violence. So, I mean, that's like the real deal, beat your ass, Holyfield. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> no oh, mystery. And like he just gave her a little uh, dual slap. I mean, he, he must have really rocked her world. What is it with those guys? That guy and Dan Harmon. Uh, Dan Harmon, he's still with the show, right? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Well, both Rick and Morty are going to sound like Tracy Morgan next season. No? <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be a bagillion people who can do a Rick, though. I'm right. sure there's been uh, people practicing it for ages. Yeah. Yeah. I still think it would be great if they hired Tracy Morgan to do both. <laughs> and then the just have it, every time somebody gets canceled, Tracy yeah, does yeah. the burps. <laughs> the burps. The burps. Yeah, am I supposed to burp? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cobra Kai to end after the upcoming sixth season. Uh, six seasons of that show is plenty, and uh, I'm glad that it exists, and I'm happy for everybody that was involved, especially from the original movie. Um, so we'll talk about that show when it comes back. Mosquito Coast was canceled after two seasons at Apple. Uh, who posted? Yeah, it sucks. I just started watching that. Is it based on the you know the movie Mosquito Coast? It's like a prequel to the movie. If okay. it's this. If the third season was going to happen, this is when the event from the movie would have taken place. They bring the secret plans, and and the Darth Vader comes out. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> River Phoenix comes back from the dead. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 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 But it's cool though, because Justin Theroux, the star of the show, is the nephew of the guy that wrote the the book. Oh wow. Your coach. That's mm-hmm. cool. Justin yeah. Theroux is going to be in that new HBO series, The Plumber. Yeah, the the White House. Oh, I can't wait. He plays G. Gordon Liddy. Yep. Hello, and listening to the G. Gordon Liddy program. Coming at you live from Goose Katif. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, here's a, here's a, uh, Tim Allen is alleged to have shown his penis to Pamela Anderson. I don't know why it's coming out now. Because uh, she's got a book coming out. Oh, she has a book coming out. And okay. it's in the book. Yeah. Okay, buy my book. I'm Pam Anderson. I've booked <laughs> He's a big cock. Uh, Although it was released today that uh, the video of Tim flashing the actress that played his wife on set on camera, like right. and her reaction that they did, you know, that happened. So I mean, Mad history of him flashing on that set is true. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, like, I definitely believe Pam Anderson. I'm 100 percent sure she's telling the truth. And Tim Allen was a crazy drunk back then. Yeah, he probably doesn't even remember doing it. <laughs> did he apologize? In his defense, no, he said he didn't do it. In, in his defense, it was tool time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm not. You know, I don't know. I I hate it when this shit comes out 30 years after something happens. Oh yeah, and now he's going to be canceled. They've tried. Not going to be canceled. Yeah. He he's permanently ingrained in Disney. But yeah. he's canceled. Yeah. It's not like he flashed Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> right. Right. Then he'd be canceled. Maybe that's what caused Jonathan Taylor Thomas to lose his mind. Um, he did drill a, a big glory hole in the fence between his house and Wilson's <laughs> house, though. Uh, dangled in there for Wilson. Uh, <laughs> those eyeballs were the only thing you could see from the other side of that fence. The the, the Oscar nominations oh. have been released, and we know that everything, everywhere, all at once is going to win everything, but nominated for Best Picture is, are a bunch of movies. I wish they would cut it back like they used to. All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inchirin, or however you say it, Elvis, everything all together all at once, The Fablemans, man, that might take everything, Tar, uh, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, which is what my mom called her vagina, uh, <laughs> Women <in> Talking, <laughs> Actress in a Supporting Role, Angela Bassett for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, we know she's going to win that, I guess, Hong Chow for The Whale, Carrie Condon for The Banshees of Inshirin, Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything All Together All at Once. Stephanie Sue from Everything All Together All at Once. Actor in a supporting role. Uh, Brendan Gleeson from that Banshees movie. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry from Causeway. Judd Hirsch from The Fablemans. Uh, Barry Coogan, Keegan from The Banshees of Inshirin. And Ki Hui Kwan. Everybody, everywhere, all the time. <laughs> Actor in a leading role. Uh, Austin Butler for Elvis. He was really good. Colin Farrell. Uh, uh, Brendan Fraser for the whale, and uh, that's probably the the yeah. favorite. Uh, Bill Knight for Living, Paul Mescal for After Sun, actress in a leading role. Kate Blanchett for Tar, Anna De Armas for Blonde, where she played uh, 
Oh, are you kidding Marilyn me? Monroe. Right. Which is weird because the day before she was nominated for a Razzie for that same yes. role. Yeah. I don't know what. Andrea Ross. It was unwatchable. It was terrible. I couldn't continue. I think either the Fable Men's or Everything Everywhere All at Once is going to win. Michelle Yeoh and uh, Michelle Williams and Andrea Riseborough all. And Best Director, Martin McDonough for The Banshees, uh, Daniel Scheinert and Daniel Kwan for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Steven Spielberg for The Fable Men's, Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Ostlin for uh, The Triangle of Sadness. And now we are going to take a short break and then come back and do some sly talking. Radio Labyrinth is brought to you each and every week by our fine sponsor, Atlanta Pizza in Euro. We want to say thank you to Atlanta Pizza in Euro, our uh, good friend Mike Hall and everyone at the restaurant. Please join Atlanta Pizza in Euro for their weekly Tuesday night team trivia from 7 to 8.30 p.m. with more than 40 domestic and local craft beers to choose from, 15 of them currently on tap. The best food in the East Metro Atlanta area, and I can attest to that. It's no surprise they are your favorite family-owned restaurant. If you are a business or a corporate client who's looking to book a food truck for your next private event or catered luncheon, please contact Mike Hall at Atlanta Pizza in Euro by calling 770-483-6228. They are open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday from 11 to 9, Saturday 12 to 9, closed on Sundays. It's time for my yeah, I have uh, the Rocky Three video disc behind me. I see that. It's a, that's a relic. Is <laughs> how thin my, young you were. Look at my abs there. Look at that. It is. You did a that's good a, job feathering your hair back in the 80s and that's what it was all about parting in the middle and getting that feather going and it never i mean even the fights when you're beating up mr t and before that when he beat you up uh the the hair perfect so congratulations well, thank, thank you very much you know that it's uh it was one of the things that we worked hard on was uh you know um you know getting the the as rocky progressed he got more uh you got more money, and with the money comes uh, the robot. You know, well, the robot, yeah, <laughs> the robot. Happy birthday, college. <laughs> yeah, you know, the directors got the uh, I cut the robot out. You did? Why? Well, you know, uh, it, the robot got on my nerves. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, you know, it, it it was getting a little, you know, um, she was a war. You know, that's basically. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. Or Paul, <laughs> having sex with Paulie or Mickey? I don't know. They were, she was she was pulling the train. I was the both of them. Was, uh, <laughs> Paulie kept saying, "Cut me, Mickey." I don't know why, but uh, no, you know. was he uncircumcised? <laughs> yeah, well, at the end, partially, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sly, this week, uh, you're. by the way, you're a huge hit with the listeners, and uh, this week they have... Thank you. Do you mind uh, answering some questions from the listener? Uh, I'll answer questions, as long as it's not math, you know. <laughs> oh, promise. <laughs> There's no math. Uh, this question comes from Adria, who asks, who are you... Adria. Uh, yo, Adria, how you doing? <laughs> Adria. Adria. Who are your favorite people or best friends to work with on The Expendables? Well, you know... Uh... Uh, you know, me and uh, Dolph, we go back long, long, long time. You know, uh, right. uh, so you know he's always. In, I don't know what he's saying. You know, ninety uh, percent of the time, <laughs> um, but he's a good guy. You know, he's very pretty to look at. He reminds me of my ex-wife a little. You know, <laughs> Brigitte. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you you know her name. Yeah. Did you meet, uh, did she, every time she hit me, she said, what's my name? <laughs> what's my name? Brigitte, I guess, tough. She was a big lady. I mean, strong, tough. She was, she was very, yeah, she, was, she had big, big knuckles, you know? Yeah. And they, they left a mark. Yeah. You know, funny, funny thing. Uh, um, when we were filming Rocky IV, uh, there was this, uh, rumor that I, I was sent to the hospital because Dolph hit me really hard, but, uh, 
I was one of those with my name times and she hit me in really hard. <laughs> was it when she was filming was it when she was filming Red Sonya? Yeah. Yeah. She, something else was red, I'll tell you that. I was really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet Dolph Lundgren at a Mensa meeting? Because he's in Mensa. I always thought I always thought the women girls got that. <laughs> uh, once a month, right? <laughs> right. You have to pay your you have to pay dues to be a member. Of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know who'd pay for that, but you know, hey, uh, <laughs> I don't know how smart you got to be for that. But. <laughs> Are you there, God? It's me, Mensa. Brian Brian Jackson asks, when you filmed the Rambo movies, did you go commando? Well, you know, um, <laughs> you, you got to get into character. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, John Rambo, he, uh, he, he he was breaking new ground. He, he liked uh, uh, songs. <laughs> oh, oh. I I had to do what he does. I was like, okay, I, I guess it's uh, song time. And uh, that's why he was so angry all the time. <laughs> it, Smashing it, his stallion. That's right. You know, it, 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 he was not a happy guy. It, that was what drew first blood, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Ass blocks. <laughs> now, Keith Barlin wanted to know uh, which movie did you which series did you prefer making Rocky or Rampo? Well, you know, uh, it's a good question. Who was that? Who asked that? Keith Barlin. Keith. Okay, Keith. Well, let me tell you. Um, I I like doing the Rocky because I, I wrote Rocky. I, I I invented Rocky. Um, Rambo was a, a character somebody else invented, and then I made him. Uh. Uh, Rocky in the Woods. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest Rocky. Uh, yes, it's for Yeah, he didn't run as fast, but yeah, Forrest Rocky. I'll be David Caruso. Yeah. <laughs> you know, funny thing about him, he wore a lot of really bad cologne. Um, <laughs> and because it's so, yeah, when we were in the woods, I, he just kept getting swarmed by, by all these bugs. And I was like, dude, you got it cut it with the cologne but it was because he uh he was a little gassy and so he was trying to cover the gas noise with a with a really bad other smell it wasn't doing him any favors no well i saw today that uh pam anderson you know she's got her new memoir is coming out and she said and i want to know if this is true that you offered her a house and a Porsche to be your number one girl. Is that true? Uh, which one's this? Pam Anderson. Ben, ben, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I actually, I, I, I offer that to a lot of people, you know. Um, well, film and Rambo, I, I learned about a thing called the shotgun. And you shoot it, and it spreads out, and it hits a lot of a big area, and that's kind of what I do with that. You you throw it out, and somebody's going to accept. You know, uh, she she didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Do you think uh, that um, Tim, the tool man, actually flashed her, or is she lying about that? Well, uh, there's a reason why they call him the tool man. You know. It's like I was called, you know, stud and then stallion. Um, so there's a lot of lying involved in these these, <laughs> these names. But yeah, uh, he probably he probably did. You know, again, I I can't just dress this enough. Cocaine does a lot of bad things to people, you know. <laughs> it, you make you make bad choices so a lot of times, like you know, over the top or. or <laughs> Showing your junk to Ben Anderson, you're on the <laughs> fly. They called me the Allen wrench. <laughs> the G called me Needle Dick the Bug Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about uh, uh, Seiko, the robot. Uh, yeah, uh, we did. Player. You know, it's funny that that robot is now 
Arnold Schwarzenegger is made. Uh, he keeps texting me saying I'm lubing her chassis. I don't know what that means, but he's Sly, why don't you come over? We'll go we'll go over seeing so the next extendables movie and then have sex with the robot. <laughs> extendable extendables? He, he comes over and says uh, what well, we play expandables. I don't understand. That's also fun. Well it'd we'll be expanding, but uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, that was what I was talking about. He kept saying, yeah, come over and play old mate. And I didn't know what he was talking about, and Put now I do. Yeah. Put on the vig. <laughs> yeah, you know, and put some coconuts on my back, you know. <laughs> Yo, wait a minute, on the back. <laughs> but, uh, we did that. We, we did that, we did that prison movie together, you know, and, it was a, and he tried to do that, you know. And, you got a mop and put on my head and put the coconuts on my back. <laughs> then they run the but I had the chain mail from Commando, and I said, you know, this is not a homoerotic scene at all. Uh, but anyway, put this on, and do you mind if I pour some boy baby oil on your muzzles? Yeah, we had a lot of baby oil in that movie. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah. The, the, the lady was by, by, you know, truckload. They, they had a big tanker truck, and I just, just hosed them down with the, the baby oil. Then I killed him with a pipe. <laughs> yeah. Carl, Carl Withers told me about all that, you know. So they all about, you know, the baby oil. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good. Favorite movie. My favorite movie with Carl Weathers is Happy Gilmore. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, all in the hips. He had the, the, the missing hand and the, 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 yeah, he's a golfer. Thank you, uh, fake Arnold. Get the fuck out of here. That was terrible. Uh, uh, get back to uh, the Seiko. And, uh, no. <laughs> I like Seiko, not Seiko. Seiko, you remember? Uh, I'll say about his brother. Yeah, sorry. Seiko and Seiko. Sika was a big, big, uh, big the porno in the seventies and eighties. She's an old lady now, but you know I'd still do her. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, I, get, I offered her a house too, but she didn't take it. <laughs> in seventy-eight, I hope not now. <laughs> she probably. I, uh, I offered Sika a house and she didn't take it. Oh, there was a you're a robot. You're not. She didn't want to take you know. <laughs> but oh, uh, you went to Fortunegger. You know, if I'd like to make a movie with Seiko and Sika, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know who took it that house though? Who? Estelle Getty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my grandma. Yeah, yeah, she, she took me up on it. And I was like, you know, damn it. I was <laughs> to the maid. I said, stop or I'll shoot. Give him in. Yeah. Uh, 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 she made me shoot. You know, uh, she was she was good. She was good that way. Yeah, and B. Arthur walked in. I was like, oh. Uh, she, oh, she, good ad. Uh, she punched me in the face. And, uh, mm. <laughs> What's my name? I turned me on. Uh, stuff. Uh, I just wondered if Woody Allen pulled anything on you while you were while you guys were recording the voiceovers for Ants. But what he shows people is not who he is. Uh, it, he really uh, though. Estelle Getty got her persona from him. For, for Golden Girl, he, he, you know, he wears a shawl and 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 uh, you know, he he licks purses. Uh, that's all I remember. Really, he he wanted he he backward made me some socks. <laughs> Ever go see his jazz band? Watch I heard he he plays a, a clarinet, right? His, yeah, the clarinet. Um, no, I haven't seen. <laughs> He's a strange guy. He is a strange man, but you're not a strange man. You're a very much a gentleman and a good sport for a couple well, of thank you, thank you very much. You know, I try him, but uh, you know, bringing back in all his memories, you know, and uh, you know, my chest is hurting now because I'm thinking about Brigitte and uh, you know, what's my name? You know, it, it, it really brings, I think I need to talk to somebody. You should go to a therapist. <laughs> Have you tried better help? If you go to better, oh. <laughs> what did you think? I, I did want to ask, what did you think about whenever she hooked up with Flavor Flav? <laughs> well, he didn't know. If anybody can take her, it's gonna be him. He got that. <laughs> he got that big clock around his neck, and and it just it, that was just to keep her from punching him in the chest. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's, it's like it's like a shield that I I didn't think about that when I was doing Rocky Four. You know, I you know hey. It, I, you know, I had a I had a digital watch, but that didn't help me much. Did it? <laughs> Lousy stinking X-Lax watch. Yeah, 
Yeah, Paulie, you need to give him a Rolex watch. He doesn't have it. <laughs> and so, Sylvester, thank you for coming on. Will you come back uh, again real soon? Oh, I, you know, I'm just in the middle of writing, uh, you know, uh, Purple Ring. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> it's coming along. I, I'm really proud of it so far. It's, uh, um, I, it's keeping me entertained. And if I'm entertained, then... I'm going to make other people be entertained too. You know, that's, that's what I do. I make people be entertained. We are all looking forward to it. I, I hope so. And we're looking forward to the persona uh, as we pull away the tinsel and thank Mark Schrenkel for coming on. And, and uh, do we, we do that, right? We're, we're, we're going to. Yeah. Yeah, well, curtain back. See, see the... <laughs> where, where can people find you on online? Mark and um, well, I, I, it's Mark Schrankel on Facebook, um, on this day cartoons on Instagram, and uh, whobuddies.com is uh, the the puppet uh website. And uh, we just found out that uh, that uh, afternoon with Shauna Ray and her family is a go for the April 23rd. We just uh, the, the, the tickets went on sale today. <laughs> so, where, where is that? And that's gonna be um at the um, Governor's uh, Comedy Club at the Brokerage in Belmore on Long Island. It's Love a it. one o'clock show. It's a, um, if you just go to the Brokerage Comedy Club, you know, they're, we're, we're posting links everywhere right now to, <laughs> to promote it. Cause you any, know. Any news from TLC about uh, another season? Or can't you say? Um, I haven't heard anything. I mean, we had to get this cleared by them and you know they're still talking to us so that's so he's good <laughs> I mean, it's hard to compete with, with milf manor which i tried to watch today and i couldn't finish because i was just getting like weirded out once they the kids showed up their sons that's the twist of the show they're all here to be milfs and have a good time and then oh all the sons are there and i was like oh i can't watch this <laughs> yeah yeah thinking of my mom and her friends all getting together in, on an island, uh, no, it just doesn't work for me. <laughs> and you and and you and your friends come on and and start playing Twister with the, with the mom. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Didn't have enough support for that room. <laughs> right hand blue, <laughs> uh, vomit bucket green. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, it, it's it, it it's doing well. You know, so of course somebody. It's- <laughs> so somebody somebody's making you know some serious coin on that so that's cool but well, uh let's hope that the show come that your show comes back because at least that's wholesome and fun. yeah i have a feeling that it will um there's a lot of stuff that still needs to like sean sean is um working on her fashion line and we just met with this guy in new york city that he owns like this small manufacturing company and um, talk about like there's a white outfit that she designed on the show, and um, this guy is gonna manufacture it for her, so we can. We're starting out with like just a hundred pieces, you know, like twenty five of each size that she's gonna make and gonna offer just to see how people like it. And we're gonna go from there, but um, we found the guy that's gonna do it. That's really cool. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's excited. Yeah. On the garment district with Robert and you're going, no, 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 R- no, right around. Yeah, brother, brother, cool. No, yeah, 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 in there. Thank yeah. you very much, Jimmy. I'm going to go home now. Are you sure? You know, right, you know, look. No. right. It's down <laughs> to the right. I saw that uh, Shauna got, ri- was it in this week in the New York Post? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just heard about it today and then I, then I looked it up. It's a, it's a pretty good write up on her. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mark, thank you. I hope you'll come back next week. We love having you on in the, in the, in the, out. Audience left. I'll, I'll be here whenever you want me here. <laughs> right. So where'd you guys find all those questions on the Radio Shack? Or we put them in the Radio Shack. Radio Shack or the main. Put them on both if you can, and then we'll get everybody. Yeah. Thanks for for, for asking those questions. Sorry if I answered them before they were asked. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my fault. <laughs> Made it to me. All right, Mark. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. See you guys later. Thanks. Bye. 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 See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Sure, we all do. Well, what are you waiting for? 
Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens in Athens, Georgia since 2005 with fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706-316-9366 or email them at Athens at LDI Line. Dot com And I want to thank Brett again. He's a longtime sponsor as well. And we do appreciate it. And I know you have some cool ideas. We will talk about them soon. And this is a direct message in a commercial to Brett. <laughs> <laughs> views, views. Or, 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 or. It's news. You. Welcome back. Thank you to Mark for joining the show and uh, and doing that awesome sly. Let's do views or snooze and staff picks and call it a night, shall we? All right. Uh, last week was the 90s show, which we talked about already. So everybody watched that. The uh, Accused on Fox. Did anybody check that out? No. I, I watched the first one with uh, the commish. It's, yeah. It was very good if you're into like true crime, law and order type shows. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple more episodes out. I think they're doing it like every night this week. So the first one was very good. And then uh, Dirty Old Cars, which I guess I'm the only one that watched that. Well, now that I know it's got to do with power washing, yeah. I'll be right on it. I swear. It's all it's power washing and detailing and all, all kinds of stuff. And there's a, a shop in Atlanta on, on one of the episodes. I think they're going to be featured throughout the series. I watched uh, The Cars of Car City. With Gil, <laughs> Gil might be into this because it's all cars. No, they're not animated anyway. <laughs> this week, Poker Face starts on Peacock. I'm watching that. Yeah, it's a views from me. That looks good. I don't watch mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And uh, number that- Natasha Leone. Right. Yeah. Number two is called Conk on Earth. Okay. Unk with a K. Yeah, I thought it was something else. <laughs> I know a couple of them. And this uh, is um, by Charlie Booker, the guy that does Black Mirror. Uh-huh. And this character, I guess, has appeared in, in some of the, this guy's project as a reporter. Uh, Philomena Kunk. <laughs> okay. I like Charlie that Booker, was... so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to views it. I might snooze on that. I'll, I'll give it a views. I like all his Black Mirror stuff, but I'm sure he just had to find a different project because reality became too close to all the Black Mirror stuff. Like, <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be on Netflix starting this week. I think it's a views for me. And then uh, number three is the Ark on Sci Fi. This is Dean Devlin's uh, Sci Fi series, where it's like a spaceship set to colonize other planets, and all kinds of stuff goes wrong. Mm-hmm. I like uh, Dean Devlin. I like his shows. He, uh... I'm going to use that. No, I'll use this right up my alley. And yeah. Dean Devlin, he's I've liked him since he did all. You know, since he was he used to be synonymous with uh, in Independence Day. He made yeah Independence Day leverage. He's the guy that does leverage and that the new leverage redemption show. Yeah, I think he had. To, I think he did the librarians too. So I might try that. I might try. I might try that. But out of all sci-fi things, show, the, the the poker face that's going to be my favorite. Sucks. It's on Peacock though. Peacock. Yeah. I when I when I finished that Paul T. Goldman special, there was so many commercials. No, oh, really. We're, I'm I'm on Comcast, and we're supposed to have the Peacock Premium, and I still get tons and tons of commercials. I, I straight up pay for it, and I, and I don't I don't get commercials at all. Oh, you know, yeah, there's the got to be something in their little contract that it's mm-hmm. not completely commercial free. Yeah, we pay for it and we don't get commercials on there. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm just getting it from Comcast, so. I get triple, though, um, from my Price is Right, and because we yeah, watch right. it on Pluto, it's like they show you one game and then three commercials, and it's all the same one of this bitch that has diabetes and her <laughs> Splendid Milkshake, <laughs> and she's just sassing around with this fucking Splenda milkshake. I'm like, I can't. No, they'll, they'll just play like three times in a row. You're like, oh my God. Yeah, they don't even care anymore. No, it's just like, run it. You we got to run it three times in an hour. Just run it three times in a row. Right. <laughs> like, no, here she comes again with this fucking milkshake. 
Uh, my stat pick this week, it's a documentary that's on Netflix that premiered this last week. Um, the Pez Outlaw. So fun. This guy in the... I started 90s. to watch it today, but I, I got distracted and had to turn it out. But it's, it's a lot of fun. Good. Yeah, it is. It's the, He was a, just a machinist in Michigan, making, making nothing. And he got into uh, <laughs> selling bootleg Pez dispensers. He would fly to Europe and buy them. And they were um, completely, I don't know, in a way, illegal to sell here in the States because Big Pez had had the lock on it and he wasn't supposed to be doing this. And he made like millions of dollars. And then it just all went to hell in a handbasket. But the the filming of it, though, because he was like a big Tom Clancy fan. He would read his Tom Clancy novels while he was at the machine mm-hmm. shop or whatever. So they do it like it's a like a spy thriller. Nice. Yeah, but it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun. So I highly recommend it. It's called uh, The Pez Outlaw on I'm Netflix. Check that out. Uh, my staff pick is uh, Tim Thiele fan. Uh, it's back on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. Whenever he comes on, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, it's like one of the best episodes ever. Really? Oh, okay. th- those two are friends in real life, and they like hang out with each other. Right. I mean, he's got to be talking about the Justified coming back, I would imagine. He does talk about it a little. Any any idea if uh, Walton Goggins is going to be in that series? No, that they haven't said. All right. No, he's he's busy now. He may have, if anything, probably a cameo, maybe at most. No doubt on that uh, on that other show, that George and uh, Tammy show. He did. I did. Yeah, I, I know it ended, but I noped out on it. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I got bored with it too. I got bored with it. It's not that I didn't like them; but they're both very good actors. Uh, but I just got bored with it. Justified. Right. Um, the the bringing back is is the wrong kid died. He he died in the first. Yeah. Yeah, he's and, gone. Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering that. If that and he's but I'm going to be said in Detroit. I thought it was that giant. No, it's Detroit. Detroit. Sweet. Nice. I can't wait to see Raylan with his long cowboy stride <laughs> going down eight mile. No, I can't wait to see him. Shit. Detroit Cookie Company and get a peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's going to the American Coney, Leo's Coney. Yeah. I can't wait till he goes in his basement of his Airbnb and finds a crazy lady living in the bottom of <laughs> A titty monster in the basement. <laughs> Trying to give him a bottle full of breast milk. Uh, There's one in every basement in Detroit. <laughs> Yeah, well, good. Uh, mine is uh, Louis C.K. on Joe Rogan's podcast. We we talked about Louis C.K. earlier being on podcast. Also, Two Bears and Just Burt. Uh, it's Two Bears, One K, but it's Just Burt this week. Sure. So Louis C.K. doing the rounds. We'll never get him on our show. We run circles around us, and I would feel intimidated. I emailed him. I'm on his mailing list, but he never Listen, wrote me back. He, I know. He says at the bottom of it, I probably won't read it if you read yeah. it. Go ahead. I'd ask him to jerk it. <laughs> he would he would do that i'm sure so maybe he'll come on if you, you can hear we it. all have to sit here and watch <laughs> I'll, I'll watch you see it, jerk it. um so that's that steph what's going on with barksville oh by the way before we talk about your the, the dogs um we we think that uh, cc the cat that we adopted is pregnant uh and i didn't think so at first i thought she was just getting fat but um i felt her sides you know the, the sides are bulging out and then i was mm-hmm. pounding her and her nipples nipples are all swollen. I'm like, oh god, dang it! What are we gonna do? I don't know what to do. So if anybody out there needs a uh, a kitten, you know, hit me up. If that, yeah. I mean, you can try fur kids. Who? I don't know. What do you What do you do in that case? Like, she's gonna probably want to give birth to them in the basement. Well, where... it depends on how old, how far along she is, because they can do a an abortion on her. I don't think it's. I think it's way past that. No. Oh, okay. Sad. I'm against abortion. <laughs> they do do cat. They do do cat abortions. Um, I would say try for kids and see what they tell you. All right, give them a shout and see see what they say. Um, Bartfield this Saturday will be at the PetSmart in Alpharetta again, peddling our dogs from I believe 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And shout out to Chris Chandler, one of our listeners. I saw him at the last adoption event. He got his dog adopted, Arthur, his doodle that he was fostering. And he's already about to foster another dog for us. That's he was there. Yeah, he was there handling a German shepherd named Aubrey who's looking for a home. And they were trying to size him up to see which dog would be best to go with him at his house. But Chris is great. I really appreciate it. Anybody else, if you want to foster for Barkville, we would absolutely love to have you guys. Our listeners are like the coolest, sweetest people. So, yeah. 
I can't imagine, you know, all, anybody that would has the time or has the space to do it. We would love to have you. And where would people go to find that? Go to BarkvilleDogRescue.org. Woof. Should be that Bark. Woof. <laughs> you can just fill out the foster application. Um, you actually can just fill out a volunteer application if you want. And, you know, we always need help doing freedom rides from the shelter. We need help taking dogs to vet appointments. We need people to do weekend if you just want to be one of our weekend warriors a lot of our people are, go on vacation they can't take the dogs you save us money we don't have to put them on boarding if you could just keep them for a week while somebody goes on vacation we need that so bad that's so, cool yeah awesome. um thank you steph and uh, uh we'll talk more about this in the future but steph and i are going to be attending the atlanta comic convention which is coming up uh february 24th to the 26th at the Georgia World Congress Center to find and out more. It's the a ATL Comic okay. Convention. Go not, to, not to be confused with the Atlanta Comic Convention. Okay. ATLComicConvention.com. That's just the ATL. Uh, some of the guests, just real quick. You have Giancarlo Esposito, uh, Curran Walters, Michael Cudlitz, Ralph Macchio, William Catt, uh, Christy Swanson for all you Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans, Chris Sarandon from The Nightmare Before Christmas and Princess Bride. and Bright Night. Bright, Bright Night. Dilly Zane, um, Bloss, who else? Elijah Wood, Dominic Monahan, Billy Boyd, Paulie Shore, Seth Gilliam, Irony Singleton. We should see if we could talk to him. Yeah. Martin Cove, William Zabka. Uh, just Jamie a lot Farr. of cool people. The list is huge. Jamie Farr. Uh, if Jamie Farr is going to be there, that's the person I'm going to pay to get the audio. <laughs> Oh, Tim, I bet you if you wore curlers and like an old lady's robe, mm -hmm. we could probably get him to do it. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Again, it's uh, the Atlanta, I'm sorry, at the Georgia World Congress Center, February 24th to 26th. To find out more about it, go to atlcomicconvention.com. Uh, follow us on social media, uh, at radio, it's at radio underscore labyrinth on Twitter. Uh, and what are the two Instagrams and TikToks, Dustin? Um We've got Radio Labyrinth Presents for all, for all of our interviews, and then uh, Radio Labyrinth. Cool. And then we also have uh, YouTube that Dustin does amazing work on. Um, either way, if you listen or like, make sure you rate and review. And if you're listening, listen to us on Spotify, rate and review us there. And make sure if you're watching us on YouTube that you like, subscribe, and click that uh, reminder button so you know when the episode is, is on getting better at doing these types of things i mean for a long time i said i don't care nobody's <laughs> but no but for 2023 we're trying to beef up the the patreon and the social media and all that yeah. stuff so. uh we have a lot of great shows coming up thank you uh again to mark for coming on uh, i mean sly and uh you guys are kick-ass all three of you is, I i'm lazy but you <laughs> so, oh. we will talk to you next week and until that time please remember to keep it <laughs>